The president has been all over the country this week pushing his economic vision. One major theme has been pitting the rich against the poor. I'm rooting for everybody to get rich. But I believe that we can't ask everybody to sacrifice and then tell the wealthiest among us, well, you can just relax and go count your money and don't worry about it. We're, we're not going to ask anything of you. Joining us now from Los Angeles liberal radio talk show host and Fox News analyst Leslie Marshall. And from Washington, Andrew Breitbart, author of the brand new book, Righteous Indignation, Excuse Me While I Save the World. Andrew Breitbart, let me start with you and say that, in fact, most Americans agree with the president, the rich should be taxed more. But I'm thinking, you know, wait a minute, this is also a politician who sees the numbers, sees that his numbers, his approval ratings are going down. So could it be that this is just a desperate politician who's playing class warfare in an attempt to save himself as he heads towards a re-election contest? I think it's a very dangerous strategy. I've been to Wisconsin twice over the last few months. And what we don't, we, what we have here is not just people protesting the pro public sector unions, many people organized by Richard Trumka of the AFL CIO, who's visited the White House more than anyone. You don't just have these protesters who are, uh, who are being fed this class warfare and the anger is palpable in the air there, but you now have the Tea Party. And I'm worried about class warfare being played up into this summer with bad economy bad gas prices and you now have Americans pitted against each other uh, and that comical language that he used uh, uh, you know making it appear as if every rich person is greedy it, it, it I, I'm very nervous about the tone that he's setting for this country going into a bad economy going into a hot summer all right Leslie this is an interesting point I want to hear you on it clearly President Obama promised when he was running in 08 that he was going to be the unifier. He was going to bring us together. But here he is playing the class card, if you will. What do you think? Well, I think actually, Juan, he is continuing and going back, in a sense, to his original uh, promise, at least to those of us on the left like myself, that voted for him. He has always said that he did not want an extension to the Bush tax cuts. He said when he did it, it was temporary. It was begrudgingly done. And quite frankly, we already have class warfare. We have the have and the have-nots. The problem is the haves are not taking care of the have-nots. The middle working class is actually being annihilated in America. And to whom much is given as much as expected. So if you are wealthy, if you're making $250,000 a year or more, that is rich, especially to so many Americans who are struggling. And that's why you see the numbers in support of not giving these benefits to the rich throughout the country. Well, Andrew, now, Leslie makes an interesting point that it, the, we do, as a nation, have a terrible debt. We are having spent the need for spending cuts. So we're going to have to do something, and possibly that something would include raising revenue. That means hiking taxes. So shouldn't the rich have to pay a little more? You know what? That right now, uh, big businesses are, are there's, an, uh, there's a, an environment out there that it is not there to get the, the economy chugging along. Unemployment is so high, and you have the actual uh, guys that create the businesses, who create the jobs, people like the Koch brothers demonized by this administration. It's not a good environment right now to create jobs. That's how you create wealth. That's how you stimulate the economy. The wealthy are already paying a grotesque disproportionate amount of the, the, the taxation in this country. And I say that as a middle class person who has a mortgage and two car payments. I'm not one of the rich. But in fact, you know, the contrary point would be that the rich have a disproportionate share of the wealth in the country. And at a time of sacrifice, if you're talking about making major cuts to programs like Medicare, Medicaid, even Social Security, isn't it fair to say, hey, you, you know what, you might create jobs, but it's also the case that America is a stable place where you do business and where you've gained that wealth, you're going to have to share in the burden. Well, that ultimately, we, ha we are in the middle of a philosophical battle in this country. When I've gone down to the uh, public sector union protests, uh, there's a lot of signs that openly say uh, socialism, the class warfare is there. Uh, these are two competing philosophies. There are people who actually believe that if you allow the wealthy to keep more of their money, that they'll invest it uh, for the future. They'll create more jobs. So, Leslie, 
This brings us right to presidential politics in a way. Donald Trump is now saying that he will be the White House's worst nightmare, that Obama does not want to run against him. He will destroy President Obama. Are you buying it, Leslie? Well, you know, normally, Juan, I would say, are you kidding? Put him on that side. Yay. You know, this will be great for the, the Democrats. But I'm sitting in the state of California where the Terminator became our <laughs> governor, and it was not a movie, unfortunately, for me and many others in California. No experience, a lot of celebrity, a lot of cult of personality. And we see more of that in politics. So I would say don't underestimate the Donald. He's got a reality show, Juan. That seems to be some of the credentials you need on the right to run for president nowadays. Wait a minute. Don't underestimate him coming from the left. So you want him to run, don't you, Leslie? You get a kick out of this. You think this will be fun. But I'm thinking the reason you're saying this is you think it will destroy the Republican Party. That's what you're really thinking. Well, I honestly think right now, the way what I'm hearing from the GOP as opposed to the Tea Publican faction of the Republican Party, uh, that is a huge division because the Tea Party members of the GOP love him and uh, the old school GOP do not. And I don't think they'll come together on that. But quite frankly, this celebrity goes a long way. Remember, the number one reason people vote for a candidate, Juan, is name recognition. Yeah, but Donald Leslie, Trump's got huge yeah, name recognition. You are a Machiavellian player. You, you're looking to absolutely divide the Republicans. Republicans, take them out of the game before they even have to run against Obama. But Andrew Breitbart, let me come back to the point that Leslie made. If the O-line Republicans do not like Donald Trump. They point out to me all the time, he's flip-flop on abortion. He's a guy who said he was for gay marriage. Now he's not, it's not clear if he's against gay marriage, shouldn't marry. He's a guy who's, you know, tough in terms of saying he's for health care one moment. Now he says it's against health care reform. Andrew, is, is Donald Trump a conservative? Of course he's not a conservative. He was for Nancy Pelosi before <laughs> he was against Nancy Pelosi. Uh, but this is a, a message to those candidates uh, who are languishing at 2 and 3 percent uh, within the Republican Party who are brand names in Washington, but the rest of the country don't know. Uh, Leslie is absolutely correct about star and celebrity. Celebrity is everything in this country. And if these guys don't learn how to play the media the way that Barack Obama played the media last election cycle and the way that uh, Donald Trump was playing the election cycle, we're going to probably get a celebrity candidate. Wow. Leslie, Andrew, thanks for joining us this evening. Direct